we're we're tanking the hell with it. We're just gonna uh, start World War Three and get ourselves out of this mess by killing everybody. Mm. And and Clinton started off by allowing um, hundred times leverage. You know, like gambling a, a hundred times. So one dollar, you could buy a hundred dollars worth of tickets. Right. Right. Uh, and. You know, if it goes from $100 to $200 and your $1 is multiplied 100-fold. Anyway, it's, it's, it, they turned the financial system into extreme gambling. Were they, uh, using, by, were they using these confiscated gold accounts from the um, Kuomintang to back that up? Or well, yeah, it was all backed up. They didn't have any legal backing anymore, but, but they were going ahead with it anyway. Now, what happened was, in 1998, the Chinese, they sued the Federal Reserve Board. They said, hey, you've got to give us back our gold. You have, we have these contracts. You gave, we gave you the gold. It was 60 years is up. Give us back the gold. Why would and they have waited four years? Why 1998? That was 1938 was when the seven ships loads of gold was sent to the United States from China. Oh. Okay, there were many shipments, but this is... In 1938, seven battleships, U.S. battleships, evacuated Chinese gold from China to the United States to avoid it being taken by the Japanese. And they gave the Chinese all these uh, Federal Reserve Board bonds uh, promising to give the gold back in 60 years. Is there any recorded history of that, or is this all... Oh, yeah. So okay. The Chinese have elaborate documentation, which is why this whole lawsuit is taking place. Is any of that documentation public domain, though? Um, yet. It will, it's all going to be there in that lawsuit, so it's public domain when it goes into the lawsuit. But, uh, you know, I've seen lots of pictures. I don't know, you know, I'm not an expert in arcane bonds, but... Right, but as, uh, a, as a financial journalist, you certainly had contact with economists. Would the average Western economist have known about these shipments in 1938? Yeah, sure. That would have been the headline news. I'm sure if you went back to the newspaper archive, you'd find stories about it. Terrific. Okay, great. Okay, this isn't. This is something you could find because you know the, the the. Just go to an archive. I'm sure you'll find stories about Chinese gold being evacuated. So this was done by the U.S. military to protect the Kuomintang gold from the Japanese army. Yeah, which was actually the Rothschilds. Well, let's leave that all stuff out for now. Okay. But okay, you know, <clears throat> the point is that. <clears throat> um, in 1998, they sued the federal, the Chinese owners of the gold, sued the Federal Reserve Board, and said, "Give us back our gold." Uh, the Federal Reserve Board people argued that they didn't have to give back the gold because they gave a bunch of gold to Chairman Mao in the 1970s, when China renewed relations with, uh, when Japan, or, sorry, when the United States renewed relations with Communist China. But could you be more technical than what you said? A bunch. I mean, what are we talking here? Two hundred thousand tons. Jeez. I believe. But that 200,000 tons is, is not going to fill seven battleships. Well, I'm, that's sort of the point. They lost the case. Right. The, the, the International Court of Justice said, you know, you guys uh, have to give back the gold you took. And they said, okay, and the first shipment of gold they're supposed to give back was due to be sent on September 12th, uh, 2001. Jesus Christmas. And, of course, what happened was, as you know, the, the, the World Trade Center got blown up on December 11th, or on September 11th, and the gold that was in the basement of the, went missing, and Cantor Fitzgerald Securities, the company that was handling the paperwork, was blown up, and all 600 of their employees were killed. Was that in Building, building 7? No, this was the World Trade Center building. Oh, okay. And the Building 7, where the, uh, you know, the Treasury police and, and all these people were was blown up and all the paperwork there was blown up. Um, and basically they said, we're not giving back the gold. So it leads one to reason that if charges were placed in the World Trade Center when it was constructed, I believe it was constructed in the 70s, right? No, no, look, the, the, let's just, so, I don't want to, look, there was plenty of evidence. I mean, okay. Uh, you know, Bush's brother, President Bush's brother, was in charge of security at the World Trade Center. There was all sorts of construction going on there. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to think with the audience here because we're talking really fast, and some of these things are going to make them just go head over heels. They're going to be reeling when they hear this. I mean, you're you're exposing an absolutely incredible through line 
that shows more compellingly than any other motive I've ever heard of why specifically did the World Trade Center come down. That there was yeah. this massive gold cache underneath the World Trade Center, and they snuck it out, I guess, by some kind of railroad tracks or something, right? It like was a train? shipped to California, and then I believe to Paraguay. Oh, um, my God. But, but uh, the point is that, okay, what happened So next, China must have known they got rolled. I mean, when they saw the World Trade Center come down, they must have suspected something immediately. Of course they knew. They said these bastards aren't going to pay us back. They're trying to, um, uh, they're trying to, you know, start World War III. And, and what happened was Holy instead cow. of they they quintupled the U.S. military budget with this fake war on terror. You know, right? And, and they got was, this Patriot Act that's like five inches thick of paper that just spontaneously yeah, showed up. Yeah, which is identical to the Nazi Constitution. Okay. Oh my God. And more to the point is that they they had this, and there's a lot of insiders, you know. Um, evidence about this, but they had this plan to start this whole Gog and Magog thing again. And this time, the plan involved starting a limited nuclear war between Iran and Israel. Okay? And they're going to use that war as an excuse to set up martial law in the G7 countries. What's the time frame you're talking about for when this was being planned now? Well, they've been trying it for quite a long time now, ever since 2001 and even before. Right, so, so just to, to set up the chessboard now, we're post 9-11, the Chinese know that they've been rolled, that this gold has once again been stolen. China yeah. wants to get their gold back, and in the meantime, yeah. the Rockefeller faction in the U.S. They're building up their military, okay. and they're trying to uh, get the Western countries on a full militarized basis to prepare for World War III. And what's that going to do use, for them? They want to reduce population, and they want to wipe out the Chinese? And they don't want to lose control. They right. don't want to lose power. And so, they're... Right. They, they, and they, had their, they still have their, their messianic, fascist, cultist belief that they're destined to rule humanity. And, and, and so... And the Israeli newspapers, even, referred openly to uh, China... And Russia and Iran as Magog and the G5 or G7 as Gog. Wow. Um, you know, and, and they were trying to get all these countries to kill each other. Wow. They were trying to start World War III. Their plan, I've seen a map they have, uh, where they're going to divide China into six countries, you know. Like uh, balkanize it, yeah. Post-World uh, War III. Hmm. Um, but what happened was the Pentagon you know, realized that through their game scenarios that, that if they started all World War Three, ninety percent of human percent of humanity would die, including most of them. And so they didn't want to go with it. Hmm. Um, and they, they constantly prevented attacks on Iran. They they stopped Israeli air raids, uh, they invaded the Georgia to stop an Israeli attack on Iran from there. Hmm. They, they didn't want to start World War III because they that realized was the, it was insanity. You're, you're talking about the South Ossetia War now? Yeah. yeah that okay. was an Israeli air base that was designed to attack Iran and start this whole thing. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is, you know, it's truly crazy stuff, but the evidence is right there in front of your eyes. I mean, it's in, and like I said, the Israeli newspapers openly talked about it. And Haaretz and places like that. So... Um, what happened now, there's a, a, a plot, a, a counterplot was they sent these people to cash a trillion dollars worth of the bonds that were given to them by the feds. So you're saying now that the Asian secret societies who control enough gold that if it were repatriated, it would be thousands of trillions of dollars. That's what it says in the legal document. Yes. They created a sting operation with these guys. Together with the CIA. Together with the CIA, okay. Uh, the like, CIA guys who, who they used to work with in Southeast Asia, right? Who, who don't want the powers that were to still be running the show. Yeah, well, they realize it's, they're insane and incompetent. And, yeah. and uh, you know, they, they're, they were like one level below these guys and knew that they were crazy, you know? Yeah, now when we write this up and we have this all transcribed on my website, I'm going to embed videos for people and the original articles on Bloomberg.com that demonstrate the mainstream media to a limited degree, because hardly anybody would touch this story, saying that these guys were detained 
on the border in Italy, I believe, yeah. with okay. 134.5 million okay. billion dollars in 1934 bonds, right? Yeah. Okay. Now this is this is very important. There's a couple things you need to learn uh, let, let people realize when they try to create disinformation about this. Okay. Great. Okay. And the guys' names I've talked about them. Um, Yamaguchi and Watanabe. Okay. Watanabe. Now, uh, I, I I was involved because I caught called by the uh, P2 Freemason Lodge. I talked to some of the Italian Treasury police who arrested it. First of all, they said that they were, the bonds were forgeries, okay, but neither Watanabe nor Yamaguchi were arrested. They were let go. And then the Italians said that there was a trial, um, but there's no record of a trial, okay? Mm. Um, there's no record of these bonds being officially confiscated, but we do have evidence that uh, Prime Minister Berlusconi tried to cash them, and we do have, you know, evidence that Ban Ki Moon, the head of the UN, came forward and said, "We'll give you a hundred million dollars to go away and forget about this whole thing." Jesus. Um, uh, we have the Davos World Forum. In other words, we can prove that the head of the UN, the UN, the Davos World Forum, and Prime Minister Berlusconi, among others, were involved in this theft. And that is provable case. It's not, you know, they, these people were followed, they were recorded, they were videotaped. Um, this is all provable in a court of law, which is why we went through a lawsuit. Okay, let's get one thing clear, though, and that is that these bonds were generated in 1934 by the Federal Reserve, but in 1934 they made sure that if China ever actually tried to use these bonds, that they would appear fraudulent when they were tried to be cashed. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, there's deliberate typos, and then the the numbers themselves are astronomical. They don't, uh, you got to understand that there's two financial systems in the world, okay? There's like the, the stuff that's on the books, and there, according to the official government statistics, world GDP is $63 trillion, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have these bonds which are supposedly worth, worth $371 trillion. You know, it, it just, um, there's a disconnect. What bonds are worth $371 trillion? The exactly. total amount held by the Dragon family, the 85% of the world's uh, gold and treasure, that's how much it was assessed at. Okay, so this is the stuff that was blacklisted yeah, and, yeah. and the, the the stuff that uh, prior Sikar to Bretton Woods nephew gave us power of attorney to, to sue over, you know. And that power of attorney was given specifically to Neil Keenan, as cited in your document. Yeah, and Keith Scott. Okay. Uh, and, and that's just to to say, hey, you guys stole gold and treasure that doesn't belong to you. And what what makes his lawsuit scary to the people who run the financial system is that. Uh, they have now the legal right to open what's known as a black screen. Mm. Now, a black screen, I had to, you know, this is esoteric stuff, but basically, you got to remember that 95% of the money in the world exists only as numbers in a computer. <laughs> <laughs> only 5% of it's in cash money, okay? That's so like most people's bank account too, right? Unless you yeah, withdraw I mean, you, the money, it's just in a computer. Yeah, but otherwise, what you get is a, 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 a book entry with numbers, you know? Sure. Okay, well, these numbers, now these, there's high-level codes that allow you to punch in, like you, 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 you go through the, the, the secret stuff, you punch in your access code and whatever, and then you type in like a billion dollars, and bingo, you've created a billion dollars. Now, that's a pretty nice little thing to have your hands on, and you can see why these guys don't want to give it up. These uh, guys meaning the Western powers? Not the Western powers, but the, the, the Sabbateans who are above and behind the Western powers. I'm talking about the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, and all these kind of people. So these black screens are part of the same financial system that was created by Bretton Woods. Well, it's uh, it's the current version. It's it's uh, it's the ultimate, you know, high tech computer network where the money is all supposedly uh, hidden. The Wouldn't there be some entity the like the I charge at the top, and there was no agreement. Different groups started creating, you know, 
ridiculous numbers. I've heard I mean, that it, there's now quintillions of dollars that they've tried to put into the system. I've heard and that as like well. 33 orders of magnitude more than there is real world economy, okay? So it's broken. The system has mathematically malfunctioned at the highest level. Now, now, one of the things that I've heard, this is an important point, some of the insider stuff I've heard, and I've never said this publicly before, but it's my understanding that as a result of Bretton Woods, central banks were forbidden from directly trading with one another. They had to have civilian intermediaries who actually were the bond holders, who actually kept the equity in their own private accounts, but part of Bretton Woods was that these people were supposed to deposit like 80% of the yield as this money was created out of thin air into humanitarian relief programs. Would you agree with that? I've heard something along those lines, and I know uh, at least a couple of people who do this trading between governments. Right. One of like 20 people at the BIS who are authorized to do this stuff. Right. Talk directly to them. Um, uh, but yeah, the point is that, and here's the, the, the problem is that if they open these screens and they and they have, we have the access codes now, they realize that the money wasn't used mostly for humanitarian purposes. It was stolen and used for military industrial purposes. So when you say way, open the black screens, is that the equivalent of what you were calling the Book of Maklumat that came from Suwarto in Indonesia? Well, the Book of Maklumat is one of several, uh, you know, physical account entries that would allow people to open up this can of worms and, and prove that money was stolen. Is there one copy of it only, or, or is... No, or is there are many copies hidden all over the place now, of course, because it's such a sensitive si issue. Wow. You know, we don't want to have... Um, but essentially... But who, I mean, but, who has the jurisdiction to go after these guys? That's one of the problems. That's the problem. We're, we are in uh, kind of uncharted territory because we don't have the structures right now. The United Nations is run by a bunch of gangsters. Uh, a lot of the world leaders have been bribed and blackmailed into, into obeying these people. Okay, so what, what's happening is we're entering a kind of a vacuum. And we need to set up new structures, new systems, a new way of running the planet. Now, but I if if if, if, if the euro if the euro and the dollar become bankrupt, people are going to be really pissed, and those changes could happen pretty quickly, right? Well, the euro is already bankrupt because uh, you can see the IMF, which is supposedly the highest financial body on earth, is saying they don't have any money. <laughs> now that's, I mean, when that's Russia scary. went bankrupt, it was the IMF that bailed them out, and now the so-called IMF doesn't have money. That's wow. because they don't have a legal mandate. It expired in 1944, 1994. Okay? <clears throat> They're just a bunch of people claiming to have the right. No one gave it to them. And that means that these non-aligned nations you're referring to, they're not accepting the bubble money that's being created in the computers anymore? They're not it's accepting all, that equity? Been, yeah, it's all being blacklisted. It's kept out of the system. That's why the dollar hasn't... You haven't had hyperinflation in the United States is because that money is not being put into the system. Hmm. Otherwise, all these numbers announced by the Fed, if you do the math, you'd say, well, why isn't there hyperinflation? There should be, but there isn't. Um, wow. Because it's not being allowed into the system. So uh, it is a mess, but here's the real point, okay, is that the creation of money it's a, in a way it's a process of deciding what we as a species do in the future okay yeah yeah and it's been controlled by religious fanatics who wanted to carry out old testament prophecies which is really wacko but but in true but it's kind of mind-boggling all right but most of us ordinary humans like any miss america candidate or pretty well any guy you pick off the street would say well uh end poverty you know um stop environmental destruction uh, maybe make everyone rich and happy, you know, stuff like that. I mean, it's not uh, rocket science. That what we want in the future is not what the current current set of leaders has in mind. Yeah, they I mean, World War Three and and uh, killing four billion people uh, and it rule of elite over a slave population. Well, we don't want that. But 
Well, right, you're, you're actually you. saying that, that, I mean, because we've revealed something in this interview that I've never heard you say publicly before, and that is that the amount of gold that's here, it, it's like all of the confiscating of the Roman Empire that pulled it out of these ancient places where it already was, that it all somehow made its way over to China because of silk trading and, and this and that and opium. A Asia, Asia, Asia. Spice, okay. uh, silk, ceramics. Right. So there's uh, this massive amount of gold that could put us back on a gold standard where, where currency is tethered okay. to something of real value. Yeah, the problem with the gold standard is if you talk to the people and, and the one group that supported us are the people who used to control the gold. Because, you see, as far as they're concerned, the golden rule is he who has the gold makes the rules. Yeah. Well, that's not really a viable alternative to fiat money, if you ask me, okay? True. Um, what, what I personally support is we need multiple different uh, groups that have some kind of planning function, you know, into the future. And whatever they do has to be based on stuff that exists in the real world. There is a discipline in reality that you cannot escape. If you grow wheat... That wheat exists, and then you can put out a receipt saying hey, this is good for wheat. But if you just put out a receipt that's backed by nothing, it doesn't exist. It's right. just a fact of nature. Right. Um, and what I've supported is I came here when, you know, back in the 80s when Japan was number one and it was the country of the future. And they had a system which I thought was, was the best we've seen so far on this planet. Now, they had what was known as an economic planning agency. And they would draw an idea of where we want this country to be five years from now, you know. Mm. And everybody would be consulted, and people would say, we want more roads, we want more sewers, we want more schools, uh, we want to have a space station, whatever it was. And then they would draw detailed plans. The, the Bank of Japan would go around and figure out how much money they could print that was backed by real stuff without causing inflation. And, sure. you know, backed by real stuff it means real estate, uh, gold, rice, anything real. <clears throat> um, and then they would, the uh, private industry would actually carry it out. And what they had was they had fast economic growth for decades, very fast, close to 10% a year. Mm. They had the lowest gap between the poor and the rich in any developed country, and probably any country on earth. Uh, and it was the Americans who came in and bullied them and, and forced them to, to dismantle that system which was why they've had stagnation for the past 23 years. Mm. The Chinese are still using a system similar to the old Japanese system, which is why they still have fast economic growth. Wow, okay. So what I'm saying is that you need some people who are selected because they're very smart, because they pass a good exam, who are given the job of carrying out people's wishes um, in a realistic manner. And so everybody says, this is what we want the world to be in five years. And then these guys try to make it real by, by you know, uh, focusing on numbers and, and, and stuff that can actually be done. Now, I'm not saying we want a single planning agency for the whole planet. I'm saying this could be one of many competing groups trying to create new projects for the future. Sure. The CIA guys and, and these people I talk to and the... Uh, the Rothschild faction that's helping us, they want their own new offshore centers where they can carry out their own plans and, and projects for the planet. Hmm. And that's fine. I don't think we want a centralized, you know, control network. But we do need to make sure that anything that does exist is disciplined by reality. It has to be based in something real. Like, the system should be that if someone takes a log and carves it into a totem pole, they've created money. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, it shouldn't be some guy with a computer, you know, some powerful oligarch with a computer punching in numbers and acting like God, which is what we have now. You know? Sure. sure. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is that if you look at reality right now, the fact of the matter is that the European countries and the United States and Australia, uh, they have been getting more stuff from the rest of the world than they've been giving. That's just a fact. Uh, and that right. Means the only that, export they have really is financial products, which basically yeah. is just bubble money. And and uh, and 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 uh, weapons. You know? Weapons, right? 
but but you know the United States has the world's best universities still. They have a very intelligent, well-educated, hard-working population, and they have all this high tech that's being suppressed for so-called national security reasons. Right. So if you we can get these scumbags out of power in the Federal Reserve Board and free the American people, uh, the potential for a boom such as never been seen before is right there. It's ready, uh, but. First, we have to let the old system collapse. These guys are not going to go quietly into the night. They're threatening war still. They're still trying to attack Iran. Uh, they're still threatening. I've had reports now that they're planting nuclear bombs in the old seabed off the shore of Tokyo to try to create another tsunami here. Jesus. They're up to all sorts of nasty stuff, and we have to stop them. Now, you've said before that one of the enforcement arms that could come into play now that you've driven the wedge with this lawsuit is the Pentagon, the good guys in the Pentagon, could at some point actually do mass arrests at gunpoint of, as you've said, I believe most of the House of Representatives and the Senate, because these guys have private accounts in the Vatican Bank and they've been bribed, Right. Yeah. I mean, so you're talking about media heads of major, the top five media companies that have been controlling the media to promote this agenda. Well, these guys you know, are preparing to move on that at some point, right? They, they, that's the problem the is that they're not quite sure what to do next. There's a lot of confusion, okay? Because it's sort of like it's one thing to say, all right, let's put these guys in jail, but then they say, well, well, now what? And and there's no uh coherent plan in place for what's next. I mean, Keenan and his people, they have their ideas. Uh, you know, I've got mine. Other people have their own plans they're all pushing. But we, what I do believe, though, is that, yes, you need to get the, the out-and-out criminals out of power. Okay? Mm -hmm. Put them under house arrest. You don't have to put them in jail. Like, most of them, it's one of those systems. It's sort of like... You know, uh, I don't know if you saw the movie Scorpion King, but one of these movies where you come in to the top of the pyramid, you beat the guy in a sword fight, and you show up at the top of the stairs <laughs> with the hand, hand, and everybody bows down to you. Right. Oh, you know? And most <laughs> of these guys are, are used to that pyramid system, you know? Right. If you change the top, it's like they automatically go along with the new program and say, well, hey, you know, I was just following the pharaoh, you know? Right. Um so it could be a, a system where you don't even have to put anybody in jail. Uh, you just say, okay, we, we're, we're, you know, we've changed plan now. Uh, there's a new new game plan, and, and instead of being building pyramids, now you're going to be building universities. Mm. And they'll say, okay, you know, let's go for it. So, uh, but having said that, there are a lot of uh, incompetent gangsters at the highest levels of power who shouldn't be there. Right. They don't know how to run a country, and they don't know how to run a planet, and they don't belong in that job. And I mean Obama, among others. His record proves it, you know? Well, I think he's folded way too many times to the pressure well, groups around him. Okay, he's yeah. a pup, uh, he, and uh, that's a fact of the matter, you know. But the point is that uh, what we do need is we need to have, as quick as possible, an open debate. We want to get everybody in on it. We don't want this, you know, at, so that we can say, all right, what are we going to do next? It's one thing to get rid of the old system, but if you don't have anything ready in place, you end up with chaos, you end up with a loss of civilization, you know, you end up with collapse of order, and that's one thing that we all agree we don't want. There's got to be a transition uh, towards a better way of running the planet that's not going to destroy but build, you know? Well, I don't mean to play devil's advocate here, but if, if the Asian secret societies and the non-aligned nations have put this squeeze play where, as of our interview, November 28th, there's stuff in the news saying the euro isn't even going to last 10 days, uh, we don't have a lot of time to make those decisions. Right? Well, I mean, no. because people are going to start suffering when these collapses that you guys apparently have helped to engineer finally happen. Well, unfortunately, because the, the people in power in the United States, in Washington and Wall Street uh, and in Europe are being very stubborn, they're, they're sort of acting like Hitler was at the end of World War II. Yeah. I'll let Germany collapse before I move from power. Right. Is that 
there is going to be a really tough winter in the United States and Europe as things stand now because these guys are not going peacefully and quietly into the night. They're not accepting that there is a, we need a fundamental change in how we run this planet. Uh, and that is why it's going to be a tough winter unless you hurry up and get these guys out. Well, and they're going to have incredibly powerful disinformation campaigns that will do everything they can to make you appear to be a fool and yeah, that everything you're saying is a lie. Sure. And that if this group actually succeeds, that it's the New World Order and it's the Illuminati and it's fascism and martial law and FEMA camps and all the stuff that they've been trying to get people afraid of. So how do you counter that? Well, the reality of the situation is stronger than the propaganda. Okay. Right. I mean, uh, they can talk all they want. It's like they say, well, now I've got a quadrillion dollars, a quintillion dollars. <laughs> See, it's in my computer. All right, go try to spend it. See what happens, you know? Right. See how far you get with that. When, when uh, Bush, you know, Bush was trying to flee to Paraguay and they stopped him, okay? Let, let's see what happens when he takes his black card or whatever they have and, and goes to the store and they say, sorry, can't buy anything. These guys will be just street trash once their, once their uh, money is frozen and it's being frozen. Well, now you had said before, I mean, right now you're saying there isn't really a consensus with the Pentagon in terms of when or if to do these so-called mass arrests. I don't know. Look, what I do know is that the Pentagon people always told me they're waiting for this lawsuit to be a trigger. Okay. Okay. And now there's a lot of, okay, well, it's, it's there. We understand that um, the system is rotten and broken, but we're not quite sure what to do next. And there's a lot of behind the scenes negotiating and talking and running around. Uh, and as things stand, the, unfortunately, it looks like things are going to have to get more chaotic before these people's minds are concentrated enough that they're ready to start building new uh, systems, new uh, agreements to share this planet. Right. But the, the, basic one, the basic one that I have said is an operating principle is that Western and Asian civilization need to start out with an exactly 50-50 deal. 